surgery, it's always you are looking at the heart of your patient. So this is the right atrium, and this is the right ventricle, and then this one is the left atrium, and this is the left ventricle. Now, the left ventricle has a very thick wall because it pumps blood with greater force than the right ventricle. And the right ventricle has a moderator band to moderate how much it descends and also to make this electrical signal that's coming down from the common bundle of his and the right and left bundles go to the right ventricular wall. Are we good? Okay. When the left ventricle contracts, blood is pumped into the aorta. So blood is pumped into the aorta. When the aorta goes up, this was conveniently named ascending aorta. The aorta makes a turn, like a little arch. This is named aortic arch. And then the aorta starts to go down. And then when the aorta goes down, that is named descending aorta. So we have the ascending aortic arch and descending aorta. Now, in the aortic arch, we have very important blood vessels branching off. And you need to know them. And it's so hard to remember them. That is like teaching kindergarten. Are you ready for it? Yes? What is my DJ? Are you ready for it? Right? My daughter loves Taylor Swift, so I know all the songs. Okay. So, at the aortic arch, at the aortic arch, A, the first thing to branch off is B, B brachiocephalic artery. The second thing is C, common carotid artery. And the third thing is S, subclavian artery. This is your A, B, C. Oh, this is so exciting, isn't it? I know, I know. I love it. Okay, now, brachiocephalic. Let's break down this name. Brachiocephalic. Artery. Well, obviously an artery is branching off of the aorta. What does the word brachio mean? Arm. Encephalic. So, branching off the brachiocephalic artery, you have a blood vessel that's going to my arm, and obviously, this blood vessel is going to the sides because where is my arm? Right here, right? But also, branching off the brachiocephalic artery, I have something that will go to my head. What goes to my arm, it passes underneath the clavicle. How would that be named? Subclavian artery. So this part that's going underneath the clavicle is the subclavian artery. And then this part that's going to my head is the carotid on the right side. But this one is split into two. And we know that when a blood vessel or a nerve who is splitting something, we usually have the root common in front of it, right? So this one that we split, this is the common carotid artery. This is the right side of the heart. This is the right common carotid artery. And this is the subclavian on the right side. This is the right subclavian artery. Are we good? Now, the C right here is for common carotid artery. But, remember, right here, we have the line separating the right and left side of our heart. So, if these are close to the right side, these are the right ones. And if these are closer to the left, these will be the left ones. So the second branch of the aortic arch is specifically the left common carotid artery. 
And after that, we have the one that will go to my arm and passes underneath the clavicle. So this will be the subclavian. On the left side, this is the left subclavian artery. Are we good? As we defined, that's when I should have like a meter paper, right? The common carotid arteries, they are called common because they will split into two. Are you seeing my splitting? Okay. Then you have them splitting into the external and the internal carotid arteries. The external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery. The external carotid artery is always more anterior. The internal carotid artery is more posterior. How you remember that the external carotid artery is always more anterior? You remember the credit card, American Express. Remember the American Express credit card? But instead of saying a max, you say a max. So the anterior is always the external. Are we good? The external carotid artery is the one that will give blood to the external aspect of our skull and the face. The internal carotid artery is the one that will go through a hole in the temporal bone. What's the name of the hole? Carotid canal of the temporal bone. So the internal carotid artery will go through the carotid canal and will deliver blood to the brain itself. Are we good? Now, the blood that is delivered to our head is very special, so we need to have some stuff checking on it. And what we see is that right here, when the internal and external carotid arteries, they bifurcate right here, we have something that checks the amount of oxygen in the blood. It's very important for you to know the amount of oxygen that's going to your whole head, but it's extremely important for you to know the pressure of the blood that's going into your brain. You don't want just to burst everything that's taking blood to your brain. So in the bifurcation right here of the internal and external, Carotid artery is right here. You have something that will tell us the amount of oxygen. What would be the name for this? This is the carotid body. 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 Oxygen. Carotid body. And then at the base of the internal carotid artery, you have something that will tell you the pressure of the blood that is going to your head. And this one that tells you the pressure of the blood that's going to your head is the carotid sinus. This is pressure with two S's. This is body with the O2 right here. Another way you can, you can do to remember that the sinus goes with the internal carotid eye artery is by remember that the sinus is always the internal. You see, sinus is the internal carotid artery. Huh? Yeah, I have to take them. This arrangement we have on the right and left sides. Are we good? Okay. So, this is how the blood is taken to our head. We also have branching off 
the subclavian artery, the first branch of the subclavian artery, is what we call. The first branch out of the subclavian artery on the right and left sides is the artery that goes through the hole we have in the cervical vertebra. That is the vertebral artery. And the vertebral arteries, the right and left vertebral arteries, that right here, I, I cannot do in 3D yet, I need to take some drawing classes. When the right and left vertebral arteries get together, Let's see, let's go all the way up. When the right and left vertebral arteries get together, let me do here. The left, the right and left vertebral arteries get together. So this is the right vertebral artery, this is the left vertebral artery. They get together, they form the basilar artery. And the basilar artery will deliver blood to the, this is the basilar artery. The basilar artery will deliver blood to the circle of Willis, and the internal carotid artery delivers blood to the circle of Willis. So what we see now is that the basilar artery and the internal carotid artery are supplying blood to the same endpoint. When we have two blood vessels delivering blood to the same place, how do we call that? collateral circulation. What is the advantage of having collateral circulation? If one gets blocked, the other one can keep supplying blood to our brain. So if the internal carotid artery gets blocked, the basilar artery will keep supplying blood here so we don't need Jesus. Very fast. There is hope. Are we good? Okay, so let's keep going down. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you good? This is vertebral. Vertebral and vertebral. Are we good? Dun, 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 dun. Now we're going down, okay? Let's go down, 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 down. Okay. <laughs> you see, guys, if it doesn't work out as me being a professor, I will surely go into the music industry. Who is buying my CD? Good job! Extra credit. Okay. So, here we go. Aorta, the part of the aorta that's going up is the ascending aorta. The aorta makes a turn, aortic arc. The aorta goes down, descending aorta. Now, the part of the aorta, the descending aorta, that is within the thoracic cavity is conveniently named thoracic aorta. The aorta obviously needs to cross the diaphragm through a hole. What's the name of the hole the aorta crosses? Aortic hiatus. Aortic hiatus. And then, the aorta now is in the abdominal cavity. The aorta, the abdominal aorta, ends by splitting into two. These are the common iliac arteries. So you have one on the left side and one on the right side right common iliac artery. If this blood vessel is named common, what you can conclude? It splits. And the common iliac arteries will split into the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery. So have the same arrangement on the right and left side. So here you have the right external iliac artery, and here you have the right internal iliac artery. This is the right one, and this is the left one. The internal iliac arteries, they stay inside, and they give blood 
to the organs in the pelvic cavity and the external genitalia. The external iliac artery, it crosses the inguinal ligament right here. And when the external iliac artery crosses the inguinal ligament, it is in our thigh. What is the name of the only bone in our thigh? So when the external iliac artery crosses the inguinal ligament or the inferior border of the pelvic girdle, the external iliac artery now is called femoral artery. When the external iliac artery crosses the inguinal ligament, inguinal ligament, or the inferior border of the pelvic girdle, it becomes the femoral artery. The femoral artery is right here. What's the name of the muscles that we have here? They are the adductors. They add up, they add our lower limbs together. Now we have the adductor magnus, and the adductor magnus, when we look at it, there is a little gap that allows passage of stuff between the adductor magnus and the femur. And that's why that little gap receives the name of adductor hiatus. And what happens is that the femoral artery is right here, it sees the adductor hiatus, which is medial, because here are the adductors, and it crosses to the back. Now, when the femoral artery crosses to the back, now it's in the knee area. How do we call the knee area? Popliteal. Yes? What's the name of the femoral artery when it crosses and it's right here? That is the popliteal artery. So the femoral artery, Crosses posterior because of the adductor hiatus. It crosses back and then it becomes the popliteal artery. Are we good? So now we are in the back of our knee. Remember, this happened on the right and left sides. Femoral artery right here. It goes through the adductor hiatus and now is in the back, popliteal artery. Now the popliteal artery is right here. When it gets like at the inferior border of the popliteal region, the popliteal artery splits into two. One branch that stays on the back of the, the tibia, what's the name? Posterior tibial artery and the other branch that goes anterior to the tibia. Anterior tibial artery. So you have the popliteal artery branching into the posterior tibial artery and also the anterior tibial artery. The anterior tibial artery keeps going down and gives rise to the blood vessels that is in the dorsal aspect of my foot. What's the name of this blood vessel? Dorsalis pedis artery. Dorsalis pedis artery. And the posterior tibial artery will keep going down and gives rise to blood vessels in the plantar part of my foot, which are named plantar arch. Now, we also have the posterior tibial artery giving rise to a blood vessel that's going to the fibula side. What's the name of this blood vessel? Fibular artery. Okay, so you're finally at your foot. When you're taking blood back to the heart, we have two different routes. We have veins that they are deep and veins that are superficial. And what happens is that when we look at the arteries, all arteries are deep. Why would arteries be deep? And 
why would not have superficial arteries? Guys, if you have an artery that's superficial, you could cut, perforate the artery. And we know that the blood pressure inside arteries are very high. And if you have a perforation in an artery, what would happen? And you'd lose a lot of blood. And then for sure you would not be with thinness. So no, all arteries need to be, all arteries need to be deep. But then, since they don't have that high pressure, blood pressure, we can have some superficial veins, but we also have deep veins. And the good thing is that the deep veins, they have the same name as the arteries, which are always deep. Now the superficial veins are the ones that they have the funny name. You will not have a superficial vein with the same name as an artery. Okay? So if we are going back to the heart using deep veins from the foot. Now, here you have the dorsal part of the foot. So you have the dorsal venous arch. And then you have the plantar venous arch. The plantar venous arch dumps the blood into the posterior tibial vein. The fibular vein will dump the blood into the posterior tibial vein. That then will dump the blood into the popliteal vein. It's the same names, but you're going the opposite direction. <laughs> the dorsal venous arch will dump the blood into the anterior tibial vein that will dump the blood into the popliteal vein. The popliteal vein will dump the blood into the femoral vein. The femoral vein will dump the blood into the external iliac vein. The external iliac vein, when you have it joining with the internal iliac vein, they will dump the blood into the common iliac vein right here. And then the common iliac vein on the left side, get together with the common iliac vein on the right, right side, and then they form your beautiful inferior vena cava. And the inferior vena cava will dump blood into the right atrium of the heart. Yes? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, it should be right here, right, in the inferior aspect of the right atrium, but it's easier for you to see right there. Are we good? Now, besides these deep veins, we have superficial veins. And what we see is we, that we have the longest superficial vein in our body, in our lower limb. And that vein is the great saphenous. And the great saphenous vein runs from the, from the ankle all the way to the groin and dumps the blood into the femoral vein. So this longest vein is the great saphenous vein, which is very superficial. Are we good with the lower limb? Guess what? We have upper limbs as well. The right subclavian artery... We are taking blood to our upper limb. The right subclavian artery will pass underneath the clavicle or the inferior border of the first rib. And when that happens, the subclavian artery will become the axillary artery. The axillary artery we can use the surgical neck of the humerus. In reality, it would be the inferior border of the teres major. But we will use in our lab models the surgical neck of the humerus as a guideline for the axillary artery to become the, now you are in the breaker region, it becomes the 
brachial artery. In the brachial artery, in the elbow anticubital region, it's split into two. Then you have the one that goes to the radius bone side, that is the radial artery. And you have the one that goes to the ulnar bone side, this is the ulnar artery. And right here, the radial and the ulnar artery, they anastomose and they, they form the palmar artery. Now, we have our blood in the hands. So here you have the radial artery, ulnar artery, and now you are in the hand. Right here, when the radial and the ulnar artery is the anastomose. Now, you are in your hand. You need to go back. How do we go back? The blood goes back in the deep veins, which have the same name as the arteries, because all arteries are deep. So we have the ulnar vein, the radial vein. They both dump the blood into the brachial vein. And then basically at the level of the surgical neck, the brachial vein is now called axillary vein. The axillary vein goes underneath the clavicle and then dumps the blood into the Subclavian vein. Are we good? Now, what will happen is, remember that we had here, remember that we had here the external and the internal carotid artery? The little pair for the carotids are not carotid veins. We don't have carotid veins. They are called jugular. They are the jugular veins. So you have the internal and the external jugular veins. The internal jugular vein will run parallel to the internal carotid artery. Good job. Okay? Because they're both internal. So what we'll see is that we have the subclavian vein, and then you have the subclavian vein getting together with a vein that's run parallel to the internal carotid artery. So the subclavian vein gets together with the internal, internal, internal jugular vein. Now, when you have the internal jugular vein, which is coming from our head, getting together with the subclavian vein, which comes from our arm. You have something from our arm and something from our head getting together. So that junction between the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein is what we we'll call the, right here, this is the brachiocephalic vein. Do you see that? Because it's something from our hand and something from our arm. Now you have the brachiocephalic vein that comes from the left side, because this is the left side of our heart. And you have the brachiocephalic vein that comes from the right side. So you have the right brachiocephalic vein. You have something from our arm and something from our head getting together. They are called brachiocephalic because this was from our arm. Brachio means arm. So this is the subclavian vein, and this is the internal jugular vein coming from our head. When the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein get together, you have the brachiocephalic vein. This is on the left side. So this is the left brachiocephalic vein. Now you have the same arrangement. You have something from my right arm, right subclavian, getting together with something from my head, right internal jugular vein, and then they form the brachio 
cephalic vein on the right side. And when the right and left brachiocephalic veins get together, they form your beautiful superior vena cava. So now you have right here, going back to our heart, the left brachiocephalic vein and the right brachiocephalic vein joining together, forming the superior vena cava. Now, the external jugular vein is more external, and the external jugular vein will dump the blood into the subclavian vein. Subclavian, subclavian vein receives the blood from the external jugular vein. So, in reality, all the blood from our head is going into the left or right brachiocephalic veins, and then they, it all goes into the superior vena cava. So the internal jugular vein gets together with the subclavian and forms the brachiocephalic. The external just dumps the blood into the subclavian. It adds to the blood of the subclavian. Are we good? Now, these, what are these? Are these arteries? And all arteries are deep. So what we drew here, they were the deep veins. Do we have superficial veins? Yes. And the, the superficial veins are the funny named ones. And then what happens is that running laterally, we have the cephalic vein. Laterally is the cephalic vein. Medially, we have the basilic vein. How do you remember that the basilic is always medial? You remember Mercedes Benz. You know the car? So the medial one is always the basilic. Oh, yeah, you just come up with stuff so you don't mix them up. So the basilic, which is always medial, will take the blood from the anterior part of our upper limb. The cephalic, which is always lateral, will take the blood from the dorsal aspect of our hand and upper limb. Superficially, right? But what happens is that at the level of the elbow, we have here the basilic and the cephalic interconnecting like an anastomosis between two veins, in an anastomosis. And this is in the middle, is the cubital area that is the median cubital vein. The interconnection, the anastomosis between the basilic and the cephalic veins. The basilic vein and the cephalic vein, they dump the blood into the axillary vein. And then the axillary vein will dump the blood into the subclavian vein. The subclavian vein will get together with the internal jugular vein, and then they will form the brachiocephalic vein. The right and left brachiocephalic vein get together, and they form the superior vena cava that dumps the